So I hit a pothole and it hit back. I actually flew over the handlebars and dislocated my shoulder for the first time ever. So we're staying inside for this one. You can kind of hear it rattling around in there. I guess you could say it's pretty unstable. <laughs> Speaking of, you ever turn on your local weather forecast and hear your weather person say something like this? This is the most unstable air mass I've seen in two years over the Central Plains. And then you go outside and it's hot and muggy and there's sunshine and a warm breeze that gives literally zero relief to the humidity and you think to yourself, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I could understand why this would be considered unstable. But what does that even mean? Is it like unstable like a radioactive isotope or like Joe Biden climbing a flight of stairs? The answer is neither. Those are terrible examples. Follow me. So we all know that hot air rises, right? It's a pretty universal thing that all of us understand, and it does so because it's less dense than the cooler air surrounding it. So here at the Earth's surface, how do we heat this entire layer of air up? How do we get it hot enough so that it can rise above the surface and create some weather? The answer, of course, is the Conair 1875 watt full pro right. hair dryer. No, dude, no, it's funny, stop. It's the sun. The ground absorbs the sun's radiation, then warms up rapidly throughout the day, and then transfers that heat to the air just above the surface. This is what we call surface heating. This air then becomes warmer than the air above it, so it rises upwards. And this is where the fun starts. Air temperature also decreases with height in the lower atmosphere. You're probably familiar with that fact as well. The rate at which the environment cools with height is called the lapse rate and typically it gets about 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit colder for every 1,000 feet you go up. So we have this large, warm mass of air at the Earth's surface, heated through surface heating throughout the day, and it starts to rise. And as it rises, it starts to cool down a little bit and loses some of its energy. But the environment surrounding it also cools down as well. So the question becomes, what happens if the environment cools down so quickly that our warm air parcel always stays warmer? The answer is it keeps rising, and at some point it condenses into a cloud. This point in the atmosphere is called the lifting condensation level, or LCL. It's the level at which water vapor within our warm air parcel condenses into liquid water droplets, and you can think of it as the lowest cloud base you can see on any given day. The thing is, if sheets of warm air are able to just continuously rise without any real resistance, there's no explosive energy release and you typically don't get severe weather that day. It's like boiling water with the lid off. Sure, you're applying constant heat, but you aren't building any pressure. What if we added a lid? What if we kept the pressure building until the lid explodes upwards like a rocket? This is what meteorologists call the loaded gun scenario. It's a situation in which you have temperatures that decrease with height near the surface, but then at about a thousand feet up, there exists an inversion, a small section of the atmosphere where the temperatures increase with height. And then above this layer, temperatures dramatically decrease with height, as they normally would. In order for an air parcel to explode upward into a thunderstorm, it first needs to continuously be warmer than its environment. And it needs to be a lot warmer than its environment because at around a thousand feet, temperatures increase with height as we stated before. But if the sun shines during the morning and the surface gets hot enough, the air at the surface will reach the critical temperature and start rising towards the cap. And when the parcel gets past the cap, it explodes upwards, condensing into a violent cumulonimbus cloud and a severe thunderstorm is born. So on those hot, humid, sunny, unstable mornings, remember the cat, no cat. I'm mildly concussed, I apologize. Would have said it anyway, who am I kidding?